This is an IDEX. It stands for Independent Dual Extruder. Let's go. So if you follow the channel, you will know that I wanted to play around with an IDEX for a very long time. And finally, I've had a chance to review one. This is the SV04 by Sovol. And I've done my research too unusually. This is probably the most available, least problematic IDEX out there, but it's also pretty slim pickings. There are not too many options to choose from, especially if your budget is around the five to $600 mark, which is the price of this unit at the time of review. There's not a lot of choices out there. It's an IDEX or it's nothing, or manually changing the filament, I guess, which you could do if you want to stand there and do one change every two layers by hand, which is a funny thought. Anyway, what are IDEXES? The definition of an IDEX is a bit conflated. This printer is what I would consider a true IDEX in that the two extruders are totally independent of each other. You have a motor on one end and belts to the left extruder and you have a motor on the other end and belts to the right one. They only share one thing, and that's the rail, so they're independent, at least to the point where they would hit each other if there wasn't some kind of coordination. Let's not talk about that. Some so-called IDEXES I would call DDEX, because they're not independent, but dependent. I mean, maybe just DEX. They have the two extruders on one single head assembly thing, and that's actually quite problematic, because if you already own the 3D printer, then you'll know that if the hot end isn't in use, it's either not ready to use, i.e. too cold, or it's dripping. Before we get into the nitty gritty of reviewing this machine, let me tell you why IDEX is the best choice for two color printing. It is one simple answer, waste. I've been collecting these things and this is the total that I got from the bulk of my testing. And this is literally just from one print. Waste is practically zero from true IDEX machines. This is because this waste that you see just happens to be what fell out of the nozzle while it was idle. There's no purge. And I'll say that again, there is no purge. And that's because it's not changing colors. This is a huge deal for me because as the owner of one GEEETEC -E -E A20M, I am constantly disappointed and distressed about how much waste the purge process causes. And it means I don't use the machine. As if it's not bad enough that we're using plastic in the first place, we're wasting more than we're using in some cases. We're still not quite out of the pre-review rant phase, but I'll save the rest for the middle of the review. Let's talk about the printer. The printer comes pretty much built. You just have to do the same thing as you have to do with most other printers these days and put the frame on the base and screw it on. It's not really worth filming that, so I didn't. It would just waste time. Be warned, this thing is actually huge. It manages to slightly dwarf the Artillery X2 that it's next to. The bed is just slightly over 300 by 300 millimeters, which makes this also a really decent price now you think about it, because it's in a size class that normally does hover around the four to $500 price mark for just a basic single nozzle printer. Because yep, single nozzle is basic now. The frame and base are both very traditional in design and made of extremely chunky, I don't know, is that 4040 aluminium profile? With huge rubber feet on the bottom, so there's actually plenty of clearance underneath to store your scraper and scissors or whatever. And the frame design really lends itself to modification as well. This front bar is ideal for mounting a camera on, for example, or maybe some bin to put your purge lines in, I don't know. We have a fully touch-enabled screen interface with a standard version of Marlin 2. And thank you, Sovol, for sharing the source code for this. It is available on their downloads page. In terms of other hardware, there are dual Z screws, unusually with anti-backlash nuts on them, but also unusually not synchronized with a belt. We'll talk about that in a minute. The left hot end has a BL Touch clone, and the right one has a leveling screw mechanism. We'll talk about that too in a minute. On the top, we have two filament holders, obviously with two filament sensors and an interesting filament guide. And yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute too. Finally, we have the hot ends, which are the same hot end as the SV01 Pro that I reviewed a few weeks ago. They are a Titan Aero style setup, and I can reuse my footage from that review to show you inside them. I feel like I still haven't explained how an IDEX works though, even this far into the review, and I think that's something that people are interested in hearing. 
What happens technically is that each extruder is considered as a tool in Marlin, which means it's considered as a tool change in your slicer when you change colour. The left carriage is T0 and the right one is T1. If you have the slicer set up properly, then you can designate which parts of a model are to be printed with which tool. And when Marlin sees a tool change, it knows to park one of the extruder carriages and bring out the other and continue. The job of deciding when to change is down to the slicer itself, and slicers will normally do this every alternate layer to save the number of changes, because you can print with T0 for the first layer, for example, then T1 for the first layer, and then you can keep using T1 and do the second layer, and then you can switch to T0 to do the second layer, and then stay with T0 to do the second layer, and so on. It means you only have to change half as often. The idle hot end will usually be allowed to cool itself down a bit as well, around 20 degrees C below operating temperature maybe. So when you switch there is a short around 15 second delay for it to warm back up again and these add up, so less changes is better. The slicer that comes with the printer is actually pretty capable, it's a modified version of Cura and I'm not sure which version it is they've used to modify, but it's pre-Cura 5, so not Arachne. So I will in a future video be talking about how to get dual nozzles and IDEX stuff working in Cura 5 but the software as it comes is capable of pretty good results anyway. The way the software is set up is to use different physical machines for each printing function, which we haven't even talked about yet. There are two other clever things that you can do when you've got an IDEX machine. The first being copy mode, where both print heads can do the same thing, and it basically splits your bed in half. Uh, the second one being mirror mode, which kind of does the same, but both printers do the same thing, but mirrored obviously. And if you're thinking, why can't both heads do completely different things and print completely different models, then two words for you, why axis? I guess they could do different things on the x-axis, which is a funny thought, but no, not going there. Now back to the rant from before, because we are about to talk about tuning, which will tie in momentarily with what we're talking about, don't worry. The question of, should I get an IDEX, is, presuming you want one and you have the budget, actually really a question of, am I willing to tune it? Let me show you the process for context, and you can't leave any of these steps out really. Firstly, you have to get the gantry parallel with the bed. This is because of the lack of the sink belt at the top. Now this is a bit chicken and egg, you only have to do this once or maybe never, and you can laugh because one way of doing this is actually to use a spirit level. You want to get the gantry level, as in properly level, as in, I guess, parallel with your table. I know. The next step is to manually tram the bed to the gantry. This is called aux levelling in the menu system, and it's the old five-point paper roux that is quite familiar to most of us. It's what we would call manual bed levelling, I guess. Doing this at least twice will get your gantry and your bed parallel to each other. Not necessary at this stage, but good as a redundant measure, so I would do it, is to then use the gantry levelling function on the firmware. What this does is it probes both sides of the bed, the left and the right, works out the height difference and straightens up the gantry with respect to the bed. This should not change anything if you did the previous step correctly because you've trammed the bed. But I would do it anyway and then I would go back through manual levelling and make sure that it didn't change anything and that all five points are still correct. Then you need to consider the bed mesh and the BL Touch Z offset. My last video on M420 is required reading here, so do an auto bed leveling probe and store it, um, and also adjust the Z offset, which means the result from the BL Touch matches the Z equals zero point. And then finally, bring the second extruder over to the centre of the bed, undo the four grub screws on the side, put this at Z equals zero and adjust the screw on the top. This makes the tip of the nozzle on the second extruder the same height as on the left extruder. With that done, follow the process for setting the offsets on the video that's provided on the SD card. I can't explain it better than they do, it's like a comb pattern that you are looking to line up. Um, you just kind of follow the process. And that is all there is to it. Welcome to multicolour printing. If you think that sounds like too much effort, then you won't get good results from a multi-extruder printer, but if you put that effort in, you can get some really good results out. It's very much a case of doing it right once, so you don't have to keep doing it. So let's talk about machine performance. Actually, I was super impressed. The print quality is as good as the SV01 Pro, which the machine shares parts with, so it's not that surprising, but also the accuracy between colour changes was really decent too. This is no doubt down to the rigidity of the frame and the belts. On my test piece, which 
yes, I couldn't help it, I had to colour them in, I saw very few issues. Being the same cooling setup as the SV01 Pro, you should be getting very similar performance there, although interestingly it looks like they had to redesign the cooling for each side, presumably because they're mirror images of each other. One part that I didn't like that much with this printer is the bed. It is that black stuff on spring steel, which sounds good. I. I like that black stuff now, but the thing is I struggled to flex it enough to get some parts off. Uh, it's kind of the worst of both worlds, it's flexible but not flexible. But you can buy ones like the SV01 Pro's more floppy bed very cheaply because it's a common size, or near enough. This bed here cost me £5 delivered, so it's not even worth making a fuss over, it arrived before I'd even finished the review. We should talk about how the purge buckets work, that's another thing that isn't on a, on a normal single extruder printer. The squeegee on the side wipes the dangly bits off and that drops into the bucket. It works almost maybe 95% of the time, but the other 5% is usually just brushed off or lands elsewhere. i found the system causes me no problems, but the squeegee blocks are screwed in, so you can easily mod this or replace them, or use anything you want, a brush for example. If you're wondering why I've taken most of the screws out of the filament sensors, well, it was because I feel like they work better that way, with the ability to swing left and right. You can see the natural angle that's chosen is not the angle it would sit at if it was screwed in. It's a simple thing to do, and I found it removed the resistance of the incoming filament. It didn't really pose a problem before, but I think it works better and I like to optimise things. So it feels like I've spent more time explaining IDEX than reviewing this machine, but I think that's the nature of this review because it's an IDEX. Most of how it prints generally day to day, especially on one colour, is like the SV01 Pro, which was a machine I rated very highly, and similarly to that I had no problems printing things. So the main thing I wanted to talk about was the IDEX parts. In summary then, I think considering this is a square foot class printer with all the rigidity that you'd expect from a medium price range printer in that class, like for example the Artillery X2, and all the features like bed levelling, filament sensor, dual Z, this is a very solid buy. I especially like the IDEX way of doing things, uh, meaning the idea of limiting yourself to two colours or materials at a time. It's a small sacrifice for essentially a simpler operation, less moving parts, probably more repairability, and most importantly, less waste. Of course, it's still significantly more complicated to set up and use than a single extruder printer, and although it's more reliable and more robust than mixing nozzle printers, I would definitely recommend it to be your second printer purchase rather than your first, unless you really want to jump in at the deep end. If you're thinking, okay then, what should I start with if this is going to be my second printer, then maybe go and watch my SV01 Pro review, since anything you learn on that printer is going to apply to this one. From what I've seen though, and the expectations I had going into this, I have been super impressed with the reliability of the prints and the accuracy of small detail colour changes. IDEXs, for me, as someone who was expecting to have a lot of trouble, I just didn't. It was all just a function of having it tuned properly, and then it works fine. So what do you think? Would you consider an IDEX? Would you consider it more now or less? Let me know in the comments. I've got another video coming up soon on how to set up this printer and those of its ilk in Prusa Slicer, so that means you can paint on stuff. It just didn't fit in this video at all, but it's a really powerful feature, so I will be making a video about it, and I plan to make more videos about this too, like how do you design for multicolour, how do you set up Cura, there's just not enough time in this video, so watch out for those if you're interested. Anyway, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.